Hello everyone and welcome back to Brooksburg Zoo. Let's have a look at our new updated zoo map first. This zoo has become quite big recently and yeah, today we are going to get back into the Brooksburg Castle where we built the first habitat the last episode which was for the Central American tapir or the Baird's tapir. We have some kind of a big indoor area for both of them. It's just two individuals that we have in here right now and yeah one of them is swimming in the indoor pool right now. That's perfect. Yeah, he can get out of there as well. And the other one is out here in his beautiful outdoor habitat. In today's episode, we are going to continue building on Brooksburg Castle, or should we say in Brooksburg Castle, because what is going to happen today is we are building the habitat for the Asian water monitors. I was thinking about building for the monitors or for the white rhinos but I thought monitors would make more sense so we can close up the first part of the building within next episode when we are going to build for the white rhinos and then for the final episode or the final two episodes we are going to build for our Indian elephants which is uh, going to be the biggest habitat in here. Maybe we're going to make the indoor habitat for the Asian elephants a little bit smaller. I don't know, but I think it would make sense in the end if it's not too big, as we already do have that massive indoor habitat for the tapirs. And I don't want to, yeah, to give the elephants too much space when they don't need it in the end. So they will get a big outdoor habitat for sure, but I don't know if it's going to be that big of an indoor habitat. Yeah, but let's not talk elephants, talk Asian water monitors. I did make the layout in last episode, I think. Was the last episode or was it the episode before? I don't know, but we had the layout right before this episode, so I knew exactly how big the habitat is going to be and where to place it. I just had to think about how to manage the yeah the spot for our keepers so uh, that we do have an area where the keepers could enter the habitat because this was quite difficult as well we had a little bit of a problem with the indoor habitat for our tapers which was a little bit difficult because we did have the indoor pool and we had the area where our keepers could enter and um, yeah so we had the whole habitat on different levels and we have the same thing but a little bit different here with the monitors as well so i wanted to have the indoor habitat a little bit elevated from the viewers path visitors path so uh, like we did have with our let me think about it yeah, with our sand cats and we also do have it with our fusa and for the lemurs. So uh, something like that I wanted to have it in here as well because we also needed to have a pool for the water monitors because as their name says already they need to have a little bit of a pool in there where they can swim and possibly dive as well. So this was a little bit difficult as you can see right now uh, laying out the pool inside. Uh, you can actually do that and having this water area in there as uh, yeah with the indoor fences and you can also separate it from the actual habitat so that you don't have a habitat inside 
the habitat. So you just have to select the pool that you built and uh, then you have the option to uh, not include it with the habitat barriers. So then it actually would work and it would not be a problem for the animals to use that pool and you won't get a notification that your animals have escaped. So that is, uh, yeah, possible. It's not easy to do that. Um, you will see me a lot of times uh, taking out the water of the pool and uh, putting it back in and then taking it out again and putting it back in and uh, yeah the whole time it was just like that but in the end I, it worked out um, when I finished the habitat I was not really happy with it for some reasons but the main reason because I was not happy with the whole habitat was the lighting in the game. So I think someone mentioned it before, I don't know if it was Leaf or if it was Set as H Place or even if it was Caesar Creates, but I think at some point every one of us mentioned it at uh, some point that the lighting in the game is a little bit difficult because yeah, especially when you are building inside a building, like here in Brooksburg Castle, you have the problem that the light seems to be coming just from one angle. And no matter how far the time has uh, come uh, at the day, I'm just trying to make it make sense, no matter how late it is on a particular day, the light always comes from the same angle. So it is always dark inside this building. So we don't have the perfect light in here. It is always difficult to have a look inside the habitat because there's always going to be reflections in the mirrors and it is dark in here. You can see how many windows we actually do have in the building, but it still is very dark in here. So that's made it pretty difficult to build the whole habitat. And in the end, it doesn't look that perfect as it could look actually, uh, just because of the lighting. Yeah, so... Um, in the end, I think I made it work just still not happy with the lighting but you can see for yourself when we are at the end of the video what I did here is make it look like it was man-made so we don't want to have anything like uh, natural natural pool in here so I used these uh, concrete pieces no, it's not concrete pieces, it's plaster pieces, actually. Um, uh, yeah, to make it look like an artificial pool, which it should be. And most of the times when I do something like that, I'm not that... Uh, I'm not that good at it. But uh, this time I think it worked out pretty fine. I also had to hide the glass barriers in here. And um, yeah, I just have to say it once again. I often said it in my German videos, but it's always a little bit difficult when you play with the holy, not, not the holy trinity, uh, the devil's trinity of the combination of path water and barriers in Planet Zoo. This is, oh my god, this is so 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 difficult to do because at least one of those doesn't work. So uh, the problem that I had with the indoor pool right here with the glass barriers is that I couldn't lower one of the barriers down and I did not find out why that is. It's just ridiculous because uh, yeah I tried almost 
anything and I always do have those problems. I'm thinking back at the, uh, at the fountain at the beginning of the zoo, I had the same problem. So I built the pool and as I wanted to lower down the barriers, because I wanted the barriers to be almost on water level, I was able to do so on nearly every piece of the barrier but just one barrier it was not possible to lower it down so I had to come up with with an idea to just hide that one piece and uh, yeah same thing here it's the barrier right uh, on the right side next to the outside glass piece uh, of the habitat and I just don't know why I couldn't lower it down. Every other piece of the barrier was no problem at all, but this little piece of glass was not possible to be lowered down. So maybe if you have any solution or you know why this is like that, just let me know in the comment section and it would be so great if I could get rid of this in any future uh, episodes and habitats that I'm building so that we don't have this problem anymore. So using a combination of real rocks and the plaster pieces to make it look a little bit more natural but still man-made. Yeah, and as you can see it was really difficult to create this with the glass barriers in front, with the light, because when it's so dark, uh, all those pieces don't look like they are supposed to look, and that makes it uh, very much harder to get in the right mood and uh, get the right, uh, yeah, vibe inside of your habitat. But I don't want to complain the whole time. In the end, as I said, I'm pretty, I'm pretty okay with the habitat. Happy would be enough said, uh, would be too much said, not enough. Uh, but I'm okay with it. I can live with it, and I think it is, it is okay. So, but before that. Uh, I noticed we have a gap in performance of my videos here in Brooksburg. So uh, it seems that those uh, videos are not as popular as they were in the, uh, in the beginning. So maybe it's because of the animals that I choose to build for. Maybe it's because you don't like that castle that much. So I'm asking you guys to leave a like for the videos if you enjoy the content and uh, do it just right now. Not at the end of the video when you might forget about it, but if you do it right now, you can focus again on the video and uh, don't have to remember it in the end of the video. So yeah, just hit the like button. That would help me very much and I would appreciate that very, very much. So here's our little space for our keepers. I had to build something like a little staircase for them so that they can reach the actual habitat. So we don't have real stairs in here because it worked with the elevation of the path. Uh, looked a little bit weird, but uh, that is exactly why we have to do it like this and make it look nice. So if we are not given any stairs with the mechanics in the game, we are going to build them for ourselves. Yeah, and I have to tell you guys, I am so excited when we are going to build for the white rhinos in the next episode. 
because I really did not enjoy building this thing here as much as I would have loved to do. Yeah, and I have so many ideas for the rhinos already, so um, I can't wait to put that into, yeah, into reality and build for these beautiful animals in here. And also the indoor area has to be a little bit different than for the tapirs. We won't have a pool for the rhinos because I think that uh, the African rhinos are not that great swimmers as the Indian rhinos are. So I can remember seeing Indian rhinos in zoological gardens most of the time swimming in their indoor or outdoor pools and especially in the summer laying in the water and uh, having a nap in the water as well just like you would imagine hippos are doing. So the Indian rhinos are very very um, into water let's say like that uh, and I can't remember seeing an African rhino no matter if it is the black one or the white rhino uh, the white rhino laying in a pond or even swimming so if you've seen something like that just let me know in the comment section because as I said I never seen anything like that so uh, therefore there won't be a pool for our white rhinos inside the house uh, and outside on the uh, yeah on the actual outside habitat for the white rhinos as well there's not going to be a deep pool they might have something like uh, like a mud bath in there but uh, definitely no pool for swimming or something like that Put in some pillars here as well and I have to say with the color combination and with those pillars uh, this building in the inside almost looks a little bit Egyptian I think Yeah, I was using the same color scheme that we have on the outside of the building to make it look a little bit more cohesive and I was also thinking if I am going to extend the walls from the habitat from uh, the monitors uh, up to the ceiling or if I just build it like a little bit of a box and have it open um, on the upper side but I decided we are going to have it uh, up until the ceiling because I also think that would give the whole building a little bit more stability if you have those pillars in uh, in the middle as well and those uh, carrying walls in the middle it would make sense I think And it also gives us the opportunity that we can have uh, bigger trees inside the habitat as well. So if we would just have a smaller box in there, it would be difficult to have this uh, bigger trees in here. adding a little bit of damage to the walls to make it look a little bit more realistic. That is something that I actually learned from Thomas Freaks uh, that is also a content creator here in Germany um, that you just have to give your buildings always a little bit of a used look because when it looks too new and too clean it it doesn't look realistic 
So always add a little bit of damage to your buildings or a little bit of dirt or something like that. Yeah, and I also did make a huge mistake when I started to building Brooksburg Castle. And I think we're going to have some major problems with it in the end. Uh, hopefully I can come up with a solution for that. But I think we did not flatten the terrain. I think we did, but we didn't do it well. So I have this uh, small terrain elevations in here and uh, the path going a little bit up and down and this makes it very difficult to put in some pieces in uh, between the path and uh, the actual habitats. So uh, usually what I'm doing is putting down those uh, plaster pieces with the gray color to make it look like it is an, extens uh, an extension of the path. But it is not possible in here to have it on the same level as the path. So we have to do some elevation in here. I did some creative stuff in here um, in the end off screen. Um, yeah, with some kind of a pedestal right next to the habitat and also putting in some kind of uh, planters in some areas so that we don't have the problem in here as well. But uh, yeah, as I said, this could become a major problem in the end. So I hope that I don't have to delete all the path and all the barriers in here just to flatten the ground uh, to make it work in the end. So uh, could be an issue, but hopefully it is not. So taking care of the interior right now of our little habitat and the habitat is actually uh, yeah big enough for two monitors it's slightly too small but uh, not that much so both of them are still in the green here in this habitat it might change when they get offspring but right now we do have two individuals in here and uh, the space of water that they do have is uh, quite enough and also the land area even though we did make some pieces of the land area not accessible for them with putting in those planters and um, yeah some foliage in here as well but uh, as I said they are still quite happy and all their needs are in the green so we might not have a problem with them in here using this artificial trees in here as well um, made sense to me and I think it gives the whole thing a nice look as well Yeah, and I might have mentioned it in the last video, but not in this video uh, yet. Uh, this is also the first time that I'm building a habitat for the Asian water monitors. So I've never done that before. So this is, yeah, this is absolutely my first time. And we do have those in the game right now for about half a year. So we're pretty close to uh, yeah, to the next DLC for Planet Zoo. Uh, the announcement for uh, the next DLC is going to take part in, I think, in one hour or is it in two hours? So there's going to be a special live stream here on YouTube and on Twitch. And I'm very excited to see what they did come up with because I don't have a clue. There's lots of things that I look forward to and I wish that we're in the game, like uh, with an update, for uh, example, uh, several habitat 
doors or habitat gates that you actually could have. This would be such a game changer if, that's, uh, if this was possible. Um, and I just don't know what they are going to do with uh, when it comes to animals or the theme of a new DLC. So I would be happy with farm animals, I would be happy with birds. Um, yeah, as we as we all know or as we all might have given up on the idea of actual flying birds, even though we do have the mechanics in the game, so we do have those walkthrough habitats where we already do have uh, butterflies in there and as well as the flying foxes, so the mechanics do work. We could have birds in here. But I would love to have some water, uh, water fowl, water fowl or water birds. Don't know how to say it in English, but you know what I mean. Like pelicans, uh, ducks, geese, swans. Uh, yeah, give us some some stork, a marabou, for example. That would be such a great bird that we should have in the game, or the secretary bird. So much opportunities, and as I said. Farm animals as well would be a great addition for our Zeus and yeah, give, uh, give the guests a mechanic that they can pet the animals. This would so, this would be so cool if you can actually have something like a petting zoo with goats and sheep and stuff like that. Yeah, so many opportunities and some of you guys let me know in the last uh, videos, comments what you were looking forward or what you are thinking of that we still do have lots of animals missing and animals that we are quite sure they're going to be in the game at some point so uh, for example the Tasmanian devil or uh, some more monkeys new world monkeys that we don't have that much in the game uh, baboons or geladas uh, for example would also make sense and uh, yeah there's still many animals that could be featured in the game and I'm looking forward to what Planet Zoo is coming up with because there's never been a DLC that I was not excited about so yeah can't wait to see what they are cooking up what they are mixing and shaking up ex uh, exactly <laughs> yeah so these were the last steps that, uh, that I took to create something in here that made me love the habitat. I used those Indonesian reed roof um, and I think it made a change to all of this. Uh, it, yeah, it makes, it makes so much sense to put something like this in here and I really love how it looks right now. Without that it looked very boring, but with those little pieces, yeah, it just changed the whole look and gave it almost the look of a museum or something like that and I really do like it now. Yeah, those little rope pieces. And then we are already at the end of the video and ready for the real-time part. So with that being said, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you didn't do it right away when I was talking to you about leaving a like, just hit the like button right now, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any further episodes and definitely tune in next week when we are going to build a habitat for the white rhinos in Brooksburg Castle. Okay guys, take care of yourself, stay healthy and see you next time. Bye!